Good evening, I'm John Carter and welcome to Poland Daily. Would German Defence Minister Ursula von der Leyen become the new President of the European Union be good for Poland or merely the lesser of two evils when compared to rival candidate Franz Timmermans? The current Vice President of the European Commission has made a name for himself with his constant attacks on the Polish law and justice government. Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki received an ovation as he reported on the findings of the summit in Brussels during the meeting of the Law and Justice Parliamentary Club in the Parliament. We opposed the candidacy which was unacceptable to us, the candidacy of Franz Timmermans who was not a candidate that would unite Europe. New times, new ideas, this is a new opening for Europe and this new opening requires new people too. We have led to the adoption of proposals of completely new candidates. According to Grzegorz Schetyna, the leader of the Civic Platform Party, the decisions that were made in Brussels are proof that the Polish government is outside the EU mainstream and has no significant influence on the cohesion policy. Where are we now? Where are the Polish possibilities and a post-political force in the European Parliament? There is none. This is a failure, not just for the Polish government, this is the failure of the philosophy of building and looking for opponents and not building a positive structure, where you can build a good position for Poland by looking for good, strong partners. It did not work in these negotiations. Grzegorz Długi of the Kukis 15 movement has doubts as to whether or not the Timmermans candidacy has been lost to the German defense minister. I think that we are yet to find out. It certainly is not worse than what it was. However, I hope that this whole procedure will cause some sort of sobering. That is, people in the crucial EU positions will notice that there is something known as Central Europe. That it also has its own interests, its identity. Europe should be for everyone, not just for the elected, and this is the main message that I hope the new boss will have at heart during her term. According to Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki, Ursula von der Leyen is a politician who allows for compromise. With the Polish government's complicated relations with the European Commission, openness to compromise will certainly be useful. There are no politicians from Central Eastern Europe among the new team of top European Union officials, indicating unequal treatment in the EU. 63-year-old former journalist, the Italian David Maria Sassoli, has been selected as the new president of the European Parliament. Belgian Prime Minister Charles Michel takes Donald Tusk's place as the new president of the European Council. His term will run from the 1st of December this year until the 31st of May 2022. Meanwhile, the German Minister of Defence, Ursula von der Leyen, has been nominated to replace Jean-Claude Juncker as the next president of the European Commission. Poland's two largest petrol giants, Grupa Lotus and PKN Orlin, are entering the last phase of the process of their merger. Today, Orlin delivered documents and requests necessary for the European Commission to begin checking the legality of the merger. Daniel Arbeitek, the CEO of PK and Orlin, has stated that the European Commission is expected to decide on the matter within six months. Stanisław Gawłowski, the former Secretary General of Civic Platform and former Deputy Minister of the Civic Platform Polish People's Party government, is among the accused in the high-profile Meloriation scandal in Western Pomerania. The prosecutor's office sent a bill of indictment to the court today. Gawłowski is accused of accepting 600,000 złoty in property benefits. Stanisław Gawłowski was a prominent person not only in the West Pomeranian Voivodeship, where he was the leader of the Civic Platform Party, but also the general secretary of this party in the country. He had a very strong position, he had an impact on staffing. Because he was the Minister of Environment, a lot of money was allocated to the West Pomeranian Voivodeship, among others, for hydrotechnical investments. The prosecutor's office established that it was nearly 600 million zlotys. The court has received over 500 tons of the case files today. The case files are proof of Gawłowski's criminal activity. This criminal activity took place for a few years. It was possible because it happened during the Civic Platform Party and the Polish People's Party's term of office. The prosecutors were simply afraid to take care of this matter. Despite the fact that the Civic Platform Party was ruling the country, few officials took care of it. If the authority didn't change in Poland, if the law and justice hadn't won the power, only a few people would have heard the charges. We would never have known who was guilty, but today we know 
know that this person is Stanisław Gawłowski. The Polish Sejm has enabled a new act which is supposed to allow the state treasury to take over the peninsula in Gdansk, Westerplatte. The state wants to establish a museum in order to commemorate the Polish soldiers who fought the Germans there in 1939. The city of Gdansk, however, hasn't approved the plans. The battle is of great significance given the fact it was the first of the Second World War and one in which the Poles defended themselves admirably despite being severely outnumbered. According to the ruling party, the act is necessary because we have to take care of commemorating this place. The area governed by the city of Gdańsk is devastated and destroyed. It has recently been cleaned. The act is supposed to help establish the Westerplatte Museum faster. The Ministry of Culture wants to allocate 150 million slots for this purpose. Law and justice politicians want this place to show the heroism of the Polish soldiers who fought the Germans in 1939. Opposition politicians claim that the Law and Justice Party is trying to hide the historical truth. They talk about the centralization of the state and that the ruling party wants to take Westerplatte away from Gdańsk. The opposition and the mayor of Gdańsk are against the project. This is meanness and saying we don't like you and that's why we're going to take away Westerplatte. It is just stupid. There are some anniversaries that should unite Poles, not divide them. I don't understand why the ruling party does everything to divide Poles. Nawet przy takich wydarzeniach jak Westerplatte. Propozycje, które padły ze strony samorządu Gdańska i pani prezydent. Propozycjons by the government of Gdańsk and its mayor were going in the right direction. She proposed a compromise. The Law and Justice Party government is not prepared for any compromises. The act is damaging because it divides Poles. Tylko dzieli Polaków, którzy uważają, że nie ma potrzeby, żeby ten teren został przejęty przez skarb państwa. To jest przeciw polityczny. This is a political riot. We don't like the Law and Justice. This party, and we don't want it to do anything here. And the truth is, it's not about the Law and Justice Party, but about Poland, the memory, the history, conveying the historical truth. The weeds growing there don't show it at all. It is important to tell our history to young people in a modern way, and this is what the museum is going to do. Thank you very much for joining me here this evening at Poland Daily. I'm John Carter. Stay tuned after the break for Poland Daily weather. It's followed by the business, then the culture, history, and finally the travel.